everyone and welcome to On The Spot STEM. Today, we will be covering States Part 3. In States Part 2 and States Part 1, we covered problems involving probability in states. Today, we will be tackling an expected value problem. So this problem is problem G3 or General 3 from the MIT Primes problem set for 2019. And the um, application has ended, which is why we're posting this problem. And uh, we can put more links down in the, in the description if you are interested. So the problem reads, points A and B are two opposite vertices of a regular octahedron. An ant starts at point A and every minute walks randomly to a neighboring vertex. So A, find the expected or average amount of time for the ant to reach vertex B. And B, compute the same expected value if the octahedron is replaced by a Q, where A and B are still opposite vertices. So for basically dealing with expected value problems with states is very similar to probability but there are a few key differences, which we will highlight. So as with our state problems, we first want to draw a diagram to better see what's going on in our situation. So here I have labeled octahedron and we can see that point A is at the top and point B is the, at the bottom. So if we're at point A, let's consider what we can do. Well, the only move we can do is to move down to one of the uh, basis of the square, uh, the square in the octahedron. And basically, since ideally, it would only take two moves to get from the top to the bottom, one move would be to go to the square and one is from the square to the bottom. We want to break this up into kind of steps. So we would call this E of two. And basically, we see that E of two is equal to, you can only move down to the square. And each side of the square is each vertex of the square is only one unit away or one minute away from the bottom of the octahedron. So we would say E2 is equal to E1. But however, we have to also add one because when we go to the, from the top to the square, we're adding one minute to our walk. So we add one over there. And similarly, now since we, we have two variables and only one equation, we have to create another equation. So if you're at the vertex of the square, then you can move back to uh, E of two with probability one fourth, which is point A, or you can move to the sides of the square, which is with probably one half and would just be one half times expected value of one plus one. And you can move to the bottom, which is with one fourth probability. And if you move to the bottom, it would be one fourth times E of zero plus one. But since you're moving to the bottom and you stop when you get there, it would just be one fourth times one. So writing out this equation, we can see that we have two variables and two equations. So now we can just solve. So solving for E1 and E2 gives that E1 is equal to one half E of two plus two. This is just simply rearranging the second equation to solve for E of one and plugging this value back in into our first equation is that e of two is equal to six because we have e of two is equal to e of one plus one. So the answer is six. Now let's move on to part B. So part B is compute the same expected value if the octahedron is replaced by a cube where A and B are still opposite vertices. So as you can see here, I have drawn the cube with A and B, which are opposite vertices. And we, we want to use the exact same strategy as we did in part A to find the expected value. So ideally, point A could move to point B in three moves. So we know our states will be E of three, E of two, E of one, and E of zero, which is just zero. So to compute E of three, we consider what happens when we can move from point A. Well, we can move to the right, we can move down, or we can move horizontally. So, and each of these spots are ideally two moves away from B. We get the equation E of three is equal to E of two plus one. And again, we added the one here because it takes one minute from A to go to one of these vertices. So now let's consider what happens when we're two moves away. So since these are symmetric, we can just consider one of these cases. So let's, let's see what happens if the point is over here. It can move horizontally, it can move down, or it can move left back to A. Well, if it moves horizontally or down, then it's only going to be one move away. And this happens to probably two thirds. So we see that E of two is equal to two thirds times E of one plus one, because we moved for one minute 
plus one third, which is the probability to go back to A, times E of three plus one, which is E of A plus one. So writing this equation out, we have now we have two equations and we want to find the third one. So we consider what happens when the point is on only one move away. So if the point is one move away, it can move there to B with probability one third and end its walk, or it can move back up or it can move left. And this would be symmetric for its other uh, spots. So if it moves back to B, it would just be one third times one. If it moves left, it would be one third times E of two plus one because this is two moves away. And if it moves up, it's plus one thirds of E of two plus one. So we get E of one is equal to one third plus two thirds of E of two plus one. So now that we have a system of three equations, we can just simply solve this. And first, we, since we want to solve for E of three, we go backwards. And so we see that E of one is equal to, expanding this out, E of one is equal to one plus two thirds E of two. This is just expanding out what's in the parentheses and adding. And plugging this back in into the second equation, we see that E of two is equal to two thirds times E of one plus one, which is equal to two thirds times one plus two thirds E of two plus one, which is equal to four ninths plus four thirds plus one third plus one thirds E of three. So writing this out, we see it's equal to four ninths E of two plus five thirds plus one thirds E of three. And rearranging this equation gives that five ninths E of two is equal to five thirds plus one thirds E of three. And multiplying both sides by nine over five to isolate E of two gives that E of two is equal to three plus three fifths E of three. So now using this, we can solve for E of three. We just have to plug it in. So E of three is equal to E of two plus one, which is equal to three plus three fifths E of three plus one, which is equal to four plus three fifths E of three. And moving both, moving both the E of threes to one side gives that E of three is equal to uh, e of three times two fifths is equal to four. So e of three is equal to 10. And that is our final answer. Thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. And we will post part four soon.